Hey guys, welcome to uh, the homework solution for the last video. Um, I gave you two homeworks. The first one was to add an audio source to this key right here. And the second one was to um, play a sound when, I, uh, when the player interacts with the door. But the door is locked, so let me show you. First I go to the key, oh wait no, first I go to the door and I press E. I hope that you can hear that, um, you should hear a little sound effect. And then when I go over here and press E, you can hear a pickup sound and now if I go back over here, the door opens normally. Okay, so let me show you how I did this, it's actually quite easy. Um, let's first start with the door right here. So the first thing I did is I added another public audio clip and I called it locked door sound. And then right here where it says public void change door state. First I check if it's locked this is not true. Then we of course are going to open the door. But if the door is locked, so if this is true, or in other words, else, so if this is wrong, else do this, um, then I play the locked door sound, which is a new method I made. Um, I could just um, put the code from here inside of here, but I wanted you guys to make your own method and uh, call it inside of the script so that you can do this on your own because uh, this is quite important. And then right here in the void play lock door sound I say audio source dot play one shot and then I'm going to play the lock door sound. And then I just put the lock door knob jiggle sound effect which I imported from the horror games tutorial folder into the sound effects folder and put it right here. So as you can see. Um, yeah. And then the key part um, was actually a little bit more difficult. I don't know if all of you managed to do this. Uh, to do this. But the way I made it is um, a little bit more advanced and I'm going through the script a little bit more detailed. So um, the first thing I did was of course I added a variable which says private audio source which is a reference to the audio source component which I added to the key. And then I made a variable uh, for the pickup sound. So right here it's an audio clip pickup sound. Then I added the start method uh, which is called when the game starts. And um, it just assigns the audio source, which is our variable, to the component of the audio source on the key. So audio source is equal to get component, and which component do we want to get? It's the audio source, of course. Okay, so right here in public void unlock door, I uh, added a new line, which says start coroutine. Wait for se uh, wait for self destruct. Um, and this is a string. So what this does, it starts as it says a coroutine, which is basically a method, which is, is at the same time as this um as this one happens right here. Okay. So in this start a uh, coroutine which is starts with IE enumerator and uh, this means that I can have a little countdown inside of my uh, inside of this which I of course called wait for self-destruct and now here's the line which um, stops the key from destroying itself before the sound is played it says yield return new wait for seconds that's just something you have to remember and then here inside of there um, it asks for how long should it wait in seconds, so I could type in like one, then it would wait for one second. 
but I made it like really clear. I said pick up sound dot length, and that means that the that the key will destroy itself when the pickup sound has played in its full length. So you can put in, I don't know, a two minute long audio clip and it will wait for this whole audio clip uh, to play before it destroys itself. Because after that there, uh, it says destroy game object. Uh, and up here in the unlock door I said audio source to play one shot pickup sound. So what the script does is we call the unlock door then we play the audio source, uh, the audio sound, start the core routine, wait for self destruct. In the core routines itself, which is this one, we just wait uh, for the pickup sound to play in its full length and then we destroy the game object. So, yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoy. In the next tutorial we are going to work on the save because uh, if you think about it we got everything a basic horror game needs already in place. We have a little jump scare with the piano scare trigger which I do uh, disable by the way because I ran into it all the time and got myself scared which was pretty silly. Um, we have doors which we can open. We have keys, so we can start to make like little rizzle, uh, riddles and challenges for the player to get to the keys. And we have a little level, so basically all the standard uh, basics for horror game are in place. So now we can start with a little bit more advanced stuff, like I said, uh, the safe, where we will put in the second key. And after that, we will... Um, start working on the enemy AI and at the end we will add a, lo uh, a little gun and um, yeah then we are finished with the series so as I said um, I'll see you in the next video so until then bye guys